Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Washington Foreign Press Center. My name is Leah Knobel, and I'm the moderator for today's briefing. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce Todd Robinson, Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs. Today, Ambassador Robinson will outline the department's efforts to reduce the supply of illicit fentanyl and synthetic drugs coming to the United States from overseas through mechanisms such as the Global Coalition to Address Synthetic Drug Threats. Just a reminder that this briefing is on the record and we will post a transcript and video of the briefing on our website, fpc.state.gov, later today. For the journalists joining us on Zoom, Please take a moment now to rename yourself in the chat window with your name, outlet, and country. And I would now like to invite Ambassador Robinson to begin with his opening remarks. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here today to discuss the momentous 67th session of the United Nations Commission on Narcotic Drugs, or the CND, which convened in Vienna last month. Notably, it marked the first time in history that the Secretary of State participated in the CND, underscoring the paramount importance the United States places on combating the global threat of illicit synthetic drugs through international cooperation. The UN, and the CND specifically, is a unique venue for countries to work collectively to advance solutions to the most challenging drug issues. Illicit synthetic drugs are fueling a public health crisis that affects communities across the United States and around the globe. Traffickers are exploiting increasingly complex shipment routes. Manufacturers are innovating to obtain ingredients and equipment. And criminal networks are capitalizing on vulnerabilities within data collection systems. INL regularly leads U.S. engagement in various multilateral fora on countering narcotics and crime, and the CND is a premier policy-making body within the UN, within the UN system, on drug control matters. It is imperative that we and other nations utilize opportunities and resources like the CND to drive concrete action to address challenges related to illicit synthetic drugs. That is why we are so pleased to report that at the urging of the United States and others, the international community came together at the CND and unanimously agreed to new controls for 23 substances, of which 18 are precursors used in the illicit manufacturing of fentanyl and other uh, illicit synthetic drugs. What does this mean in practice? As a result of this action, the 192 countries which are party to the 1988 convention will be obligated to add these chemicals to their own domestic chemical control systems to effectively monitor international trade in these chemicals and provide a legal basis to seize these chemicals if there is evidence that they are intended to be used in illicit drug manufacture. Countries party to the convention will also be legally required to enforce proper labeling and documentation of imports and exports, and we can request that countries exporting these chemicals to the United States provide specific information that can help identify suspicious shipments. In addition to these obligations, parties will be obligated to report information to the International Narcotics Control Board annually on seizures of these substances, allowing for faster and better cooperation among enforcement authorities. The international scheduling of these chemicals will strengthen law enforcement efforts to counter trafficking of dangerous drugs that are devastating communities in the United States and around the world. In direct response to the public health challenges uh, we see at home, the United States and 30 of our partners from around the world came together at the CND to sponsor a resolution a document that guides UN member states and the UN on, on implementing the International Drug Control Treaties or other drug control commitments on overdose prevention and response. The resolution was successfully adopted and will advance global data collection and information sharing on this issue to reduce the number of overdoses linked to drugs such as fentanyl. 
The successes at the CND last month represent only part of our efforts. As you likely know, the United States launched the Global Coalition to Address Synthetic Drug Threats in July 2023. Under the leadership of Secretary Blinken, this inter international endeavor has garnered participation from 151 countries and 14 international organizations. Through collaborative efforts, the coalition is swiftly moving to translate recommendations into tangible actions aimed at preventing illicit drug production and trafficking, detecting emerging threats, and promoting uh, public health interventions. Furthermore, the United States is significantly bolstering its support in this fight. Following the initial commitment of $100 million last September, the administration has requested approximately $170 million more to fund global efforts aimed at tackling illicit synthetic drug threats. These resources will enhance law enforcement capabilities, uh, forge cross-border cooperation and information sharing, support public health initiatives, and expand access to treatment for individuals grappling with addiction. In closing, we are very pleased that the CND meeting served as a catalyst for enhanced international commitment and change. There is more to be done. The United States remains steadfast in its dedication to this cause and calls upon all nations to join us in our collective efforts to safeguard public health, promote global security, and combat the threat of illicit synthetic drugs. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Um, so for those of you in the room, if you have a question, raise your hand. Uh, please also project your uh, name and media outlet. And then for our journalists on Zoom, due to some technical issues, we will take questions in the chat only. So please type your question in the chat box and also make sure that your name and outlet is listed clearly. Um, so we will take questions from journalists in the room first. Juan? You know, the, the fight against drugs is, uh, is a priority. So how is the, the update, or if we could have an update, on how is that cooperation between the U.S. and Colombia going uh, towards those efforts to fight uh, the drugs? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, it's a great question. Look, the United States and Colombia have a long history of working together, uh, fighting um, the trafficking of cocaine, uh, and increasingly uh, going after uh, traffickers of uh, synthetic uh, synthetic drugs. Um, we continue to work very closely together. The uh, Petro administration has made it very clear that they want the United States walking uh, side by side with them on uh, the fight against uh, illicit uh, trafficking, uh, anti-corruption efforts, uh, interdiction efforts. Um, uh, they want to look at other areas like uh, environmental crimes and rural security. And uh, the United States has uh, made it very clear that it's committed to working with the government of Colombia to continue in this fight. Great. We're going to turn to a couple pre-submitted questions, mm -hmm. if, that's, if that works. Um, so to start, can you tell us about how the State Department works with other countries on reducing trafficking of fentanyl and its precursor chemicals? Have you received good cooperation with Mexico, China, and other countries? Um, so the, the United States uh, works very closely with our uh, neighbors, both Mexico and Canada, in a trilateral effort to, um, uh, to uh, reduce the, the uh, amount of uh, synthetic drugs coming into the United States to go after the networks that are um, that are uh, distributing and uh, manufacturing these drugs, and um, uh, to both uh, exchange information, to uh, look at efforts on um, uh, addressing uh, public health uh, issues. Um, we are uh, we have been working very closely we continue to work very closely with our partners uh, in mexico uh, um, 
both on the um, go, on going identifying the networks and going after the networks. We have um, uh, worked very closely on uh, uh, building capacity uh, and uh, making sure that uh, our southwest border, their north uh, northern border, uh, have the have the uh, tools necessary to monitor trafficking of uh, illicit uh, illicit drugs um, uh, and uh, precursor chemicals. Uh, so we have uh, great cooperation with Mexico. We are increasingly working uh, more closely with China. Uh, you will all recall that uh, during the Woodside um, uh, 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 meeting between uh, President Biden and President Xi, they committed, both both presidents committed to uh, working more closely together on uh, counter-narcotics efforts. Uh, I traveled to uh, Beijing in January uh, to begin that effort. Uh, we met again in Vienna uh, to begin that effort. Uh, both uh, in, in Vienna, uh, the, our delegation was led by um, DHS Secretary Mayorkas. Uh, we believe uh, that the uh, PRC is beginning to um, uh, work more closely on uh, notifying those uh, companies uh, based in the PRC um, uh, of uh, these increased efforts to uh, monitor uh, the production of precursor uh, chemicals uh, going around the world, but particularly going to Mexico. Uh, and to um, warn those companies that uh, there will be increased measures to uh, to distribute these uh, these chemicals. And we have a couple more uh, questions that have been submitted virtually, so I'm going to read them out loud. Um, so to start, Dasuki Nakai from Asahi Shimbun uh, in Japan asks: um, Yesterday, the House Select Committee released a report stating that the PRC government, quote, directly subsidizes the manufacturing and export, exporting illicit fentanyl materials and other synthetic narcotics through tax rebates, end quote. What are your thoughts on the report and how are you working with China? Well, that's a, also a great question. Um, we are aware of this report. Um, we have no evidence that the government of the PRC is deliberately directing the shipment of illicit drugs into the United States. And in fact, we know um, back in 2019, when asked uh, to, uh, when we asked the, the PRC to stop shipments of fentanyl directly to the United States, they did that. Um, so that was a sign of their willingness to, to work with us on, on this issue. Um, we also know that uh, PRC-based companies are the largest source of precursor chemicals used to manufacture illicit fentanyl that affects the United States. That's why we've been so focused on pressing the PRC to address the, this significant problem. Um, uh, that's the importance of this regener the regeneration uh, of this counter-narcotics working group. Uh, and we will uh, continue to engage with the PRC on this very important issue. Uh, our next question um, that was submitted virtually comes from Robert Papa um, with MCN TV in Albania. He asks, why is the State Department tolerating the Albanian government after the huge charges of hard drug trafficking? Well, uh, number one, drug trafficking uh, is an issue. It's something that uh, affects all countries uh, around the world. And as Secretary Blinken has said often, uh, no one country can address this issue alone. Uh, we are uh, working very closely with our, our Albanian partners uh, to go after the uh, uh, narcotics trafficking uh, networks that are working out of Albania. Um, and we've had great cooperation. Uh, we hope to continue to have great cooperation. Um, and as long as we do, we will continue to, to work with them. Uh, not only um, in Albania, uh, but um, uh, as these networks affect other countries and regions around the world, we'll continue to work with them there. 
Um, our next question is from Jose Diaz Briseño with Reformer, Reforma Newspaper in Mexico. Uh, Jose asks, what is the current level of seizures of fentanyl across the U.S.-Mexico border? Some reports say that the drug cartels in Sinaloa have paused production of fentanyl pills. Has this been reflected on the numbers we see at the border? Uh, I think that's a great question. I'm probably going to have to get back to you on specific numbers. Um, but I will say that um, uh, my colleagues at the uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, and the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration uh, continue to seize large quantities of uh, fentanyl uh, at our southwest border. And that's why we continue to work so closely uh, with our partners in Mexico. Uh, to to go after these networks. Okay, great. Uh, this ends the Q&A portion of today's briefing. Ambassador Robinson, do you have any final remarks you'd like to share? Uh, no, uh, only to say that um, the United States, uh, as the Secretary has said, is really, uh, has been a canary in the coal mine uh, in terms of the devastating effects uh, synthetic drugs uh, have had uh, on communities all across uh, America. Um, uh, the reason he started the Global Coalition uh, uh, back in, in 2023 uh, was to warn other countries of what might what could happen uh, if they don't get on this issue uh, uh, early, uh, and also to let them know that the United States is here to help. Uh, and I think the reaction to the uh, establishment of this global coalition, which started from zero and now has over 150 countries, uh, is a sign that um, the the international community uh, has heeded our call and uh, um, wants to work very closely with us on addressing um, uh, these concerns. So thank you. Thank you. This concludes our briefing. I want to give a special thanks to our briefer for sharing their time with us today and to those of you who participated. Thank you.